So thank you very much for inviting me today. Um, it's bizarre because actually a couple of years ago, just talking to Gemma, who's our uh, next speaker, I actually did a sort of review and went back for, did a project for David, going back to uh, contacting psychology graduates about their career paths. Uh, and that was quite inspiring for me because I could go back and see all the different things that people had done. Um, and it's great to obviously have Gemma, who's one of the people I interviewed. I think we figured out it was three years ago um, today. And to be on the same panel as Gemma is, is quite an achievement, really. Um, so what I'm going to talk to uh, you about today is basically my career um, to date so far, because as far as I'm concerned, I've only actually been in my post one year. So I'm very much early on in my career. Uh, and how I think uh, the degree in itself has helped me and is still helping me progress in my career at the moment. And I'm still, uh, I am very fond, and I know Louise comes back as well, because some of you have been to her lectures for forensic psychology. Uh, we come back every year and do guest lectures. We're very, very fond of John Moores. And the reason why we come back is because um, we love our experience here and we felt like we got a lot out of it. So we try as much as we can to keep in touch. And I know Gemma still keeps in touch with everyone within the university as well. It's kind of hard, it's a university that I found quite difficult to let go of. Um, so I um, graduated in 2008. I actually started as a mature student. So um, believe it or not, I was a professional dancer before I became uh, doing what I'm doing today, which uh, my staff friends think is hilarious and they try to bribe me with things on a day-to-day -day basis. Doesn't work, I'm retired mm -hmm. um, at a very young age. Um, and I got to a point in my life when um, I started the degree when I was 24. I'll let you figure out the timeline from yourselves. Um, I came back here at 24 and sort of decided at that age that dancing was something for me that was a kind of short-lived career and I wanted something that I was interested in. And it was as silly as I quite enjoyed reading books and I quite enjoyed the criminal psychology. And I thought, that's a bit interesting, I'll give that a go. Never in a million years did I think I would end up here um, doing what I'm doing today. So um, I came back to uh, John Moores and the reason why I chose a degree was because it had the nice link of forensic psychology with the core and the Louise touched on it very much so, which is the idea of having um, that backing that you need. So if I decided and speaking to some people today, not sure about what I wanted to do, I knew I had that accreditation in the undergraduate degree so I could go on to various careers afterwards. So that was really important to me. But the other strand of it was that I knew it had a criminal justice element to it. So if I wanted to go into a law side or a legal side or something criminology I had that link as well so the thing for me was um, you have the forensic psychology option to pick up in year three and to me that widens a door for you and that's the main reason why I chose the degree and I was really happy because I, I, I definitely wasn't wrong I'm, I'm fully aware you go through the undergraduate programme, there's some modules you hate, and we were talking about this before, you know, some bits you don't like and some bits you don't. Um, I'll ask a question, who doesn't enjoy research methods? Look at this, I knew this was going to happen. Okay, I am going to tell you now, research methods has been the one module that has got me where I am today. Okay, it is the most hated module amongst most students, but I guarantee you it is one of the key skills you will have as a psychology student. You can just about go into any career type with um, some kind of research working with people if you have got good research methods background. So if you're flunking in it, you need to bring your grades up for a start. You need to be bringing uh, more attention to that because it's a real core skill. Um, so what happened is I finished in, oh, well, actually, um, year two, I remember sitting into a lecture, um, it was over at criminal justice and they were talking about the criminal justice system and how a lot of the magistrates um, tend to obviously turn over 98% of all the criminal cases in the UK. But these magistrates are out of date, they're all old, they're all middle class. And I was like, well, surely I can do that then. So I picked up the phone, phoned my local court and said, how do I become a magistrate? He said, apply. Next thing you know, by the end of year two, I'm sitting on a bench and deciding whether someone's guilty and whether I'm sending them to prison or not. So it was a very surreal experience that very quickly I got um, thrown straight into that criminal justice world. And that is the one thing that I think has really opened doors for me in my career. And it sounds very silly and very elitist, but having the title of Justice of the Peace after your name um, and having that experience of first-hand dealing with uh, the criminal justice system is something that really sold as a unique factor. So again, going back to Louise's point, 
both of us in the patterns, and Gemma will talk about it and what she's done as well, you'll see a recurring thing of volunteer work. Okay, if you've not already got that, going out there and getting some experience is really important. You know now it's very competitive out there. A degree is not enough. The whole idea is you get these wow skills from John Moores, but you need to go out there, you need to collect some other experience, and that's what's really important if you want to develop in your career. And I'm sure all of us would be happy to discuss a few more options around that. So I became a magistrate, and I've been sitting on the bench now since, um, what, for six or seven years? Um, and find the experience extremely interesting. It's been a fantastic thing for me to do. Um, so by the time I got into year three, I knew my dissertation was all set up because I was going to do it on magistrates. And it's kind of led the way because uh, a couple of weeks ago, I gave a lecture on the decision making in the courts for the year three forensic psychology. So year two students, you'll probably see me and Louise next year as well. Um, so when I finished, and I was talking about this before as well to some of the students, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. I kind of thought I wanted to be a profiler. Didn't know the, whether the job existed. Kind of like the idea of working with criminals, but had no idea whether there was actually a job that I could go out there and go, can I please apply? There are jobs that do exist if you're interested in working with uh, sort of the police from a criminal perspective and sort of profiling, and it's kind of, I'm using that as that's the term that everyone kind of knows. Um, they're very, very difficult to get, and there's not many of them that exist in the UK. And I didn't realise that until I came to the, the end of my undergraduate. So I kind of made a decision, and I actually duly applied for um, a GMP as a police officer and applied for a master's. And what I did was I applied for a few master's courses, because when you come to the end of your um, undergraduate, you'll realize there's different types of courses around. There's some forensic psychology that are more focused on Louise's career, which is more about working with offenders, risk assessments, and much more of a forensic in the typical sense approach. And there's some courses, like the one I decided to do, which was at Liverpool University, which was a bit more of a legal and a bit more of an investigative, that's why it's called investigative psychology. So I kind of knew, I did a bit of work experience over the summer of working with people with some uh, mental disorders, I hated it, okay? Very different experience, but this is the great thing about, uh, you know, different human beings love different things. I did that, figured out I didn't want to do that, then knew the course for me was do working with the police because I knew that I didn't want to deal with offenders uh, face to face. So before you decide what you want to do as a career, go and check <laughs> that you actually like doing it. That's the best advice that I can possibly give you. So I tried to do both before I actually really committed to doing a master's because I wanted to know which career I wanted to go down. So I got the placement um, at Liverpool. I was lucky and I got um, a scholarship to study at um, master's because I didn't have a lot of money. I was a mature student. I had a house to pay. I was living with my partner. So I had all these things. And I managed to apply to Liverpool University and say, I've predicted a first class at John Moores. I'm a magistrate. I'm doing all of this. And they managed to get me a scholarship to actually study at Liverpool University. So because of my experience and the stuff I gained at John Moores, that then led the way to um, the University of Psychology. Um, I was also applied a while on the course for um, a placement with the police force down in Kent. And this has ended up kind of funneling the rest of my career because um, I ended up working with a public protection crime unit, um, and which has now turned into a child exploitation investigation team. And now my specialism is actually looking into child exploitation online. So for my master's placement, I went to this force and I ended up developing a risk assessment tool um, with the D detective chief inspector over there on assessing uh, the risk of child abuse in those offenders that are engaging in decent images. Um, about a year ago, this was rolled out nationally to all police forces in the UK. So every single police force in the UK is now using my risk assessment to say whether this, car, this person that they're looking at should be arrested today or whether this is something that we should be going and doing, maybe leaving and putting another case above it. Because the problem that we've got in the moment, as you'll probably see from the media, we've got a lot of offenders that are engaged in this behaviour. So I ended up being a bit of a profiler without actually realising it. I was sitting there realising, well, actually, what am I doing? I'm prioritising those offenders that are most at risk, which is more or less the profiling job. 
So this was um, started off as a master's and then because of the success of the project, it developed into the PhD. So I ended up working on the project for four years in total and got my PhD in, well, I had my Viva in November, October, I think it was. October, I managed to graduate in December with my nice big red gown from uh, Liverpool University and wandering around with it. I would hide it for a week. I don't know why. I just kind of walked around at home with it on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it was a very, very proud moment um, to become uh, a doctor um, in philosophy and to realise that in 2008 I finished my undergraduate here and in 2012 I was a doctor. It was quite a surreal experience for me. Um, and what's happened since then is I was quite, um, I say I was quite lucky. I knew I was coming to the end of my PhD and thought that um, I best start thinking about careers. Um, I had, it was um, after my undergraduate, because I was, um, I call myself a geek. I was a bit of a geek at undergrad. I got a first class, you can probably imagine, mature student. Was one of those people that didn't go to the parties that much. Yes, that was me. Um, so um, when I finished my actual undergraduate and when I was um, doing the masters, as I said, I didn't have a lot of money and John uh, Moores were very uh, kind to me, realised my geekiness and took full advantage and brought me back as a sessional lecturer. So I was teaching on research methods for year one and year twos um, as soon as I finished my undergraduate, which was a fantastic experience. And all that did was that really cemented my research method skills. So when it came to the masters, when it came to building a risk assessment tool for the police, I knew what I was doing was really grounded in good research method skills. I knew exactly what I was doing. I knew that all the tests had been done. And this was because of the skills I did, mainly on the research methods across those two years at John Moores. And now within my position, it's definitely one of the core skills that I've got at the moment. So um, moving on, so I applied for a position um, in February last year, so I'm just coming on to a year now for a lecturer position. Knowing that I hadn't finished my PhD yet, I still had about six months of writing up to do, maybe blagged it a little bit in the interview that I was nearly done. Okay, nearly there. Um, and managed to get the position of lecturer over at the uh, University of Central Lancashire. have taken a slight sidestep, and I'm not actually in a psychology department. I'm actually working in a policing and criminal investigation team. And I base my advantage and my unique contribution to the team, because I work with 10 retired, very senior police officers. They're all double my age, at least, and they're all retired. And I'm the only person that is research um, active and is bringing a lot into the university at the moment because of my research skills. So I ended up with putting into a very unique position within that university and I absolutely love my job. The great thing about what I do, because you may sit here and go, why do I want to be a lecturer? I see my lecturers every day. They may be boring. They don't look very happy every time they see me. I can honestly say it's the best job in the world. I absolutely love my job because it gives me the freedom. If I get a phone call I did today off the NSPCC, We've got a project on indecent images. We need you to come down. Can you do it? Yep. Book out my time. That's it. I can go down and I can do some research. I have very, very minimal teaching. I do a lot of research. Another thing that I do, because I realise I'm really talking, I have this tendency, um, is that I do a lot of consultation work for the police. So for very, very serious crimes that involve child sexual abuse and the potential for indecent images, I would get a call uh, from whatever police service it is within the UK asking for me to go down and have a look at the case. Um, and to me, that tells me that I've reached a really good stage in my career quite quickly, and I'm not too sure how I did it. I've become a bit of an expert in a, a niche uh, area uh, within forensic psychology. So it's kind of proud moment for me to say, well, from what I did in my undergraduate to get these calls on these very high profile cases and give advice to the police about the risk of this individual um, uh, is obviously a very good thing for me. And again, I will go back to the fact that as horrible as it sounds, the research methods for me personally was a key skill that I got in the undergraduate programme. Um, and last thing I'll say is, you know, David has become a key friend since I've obviously left John Moores and there's a few staff members that I'm still in touch with now because what I did was is I engaged with the staff. 
and I spoke to them and I said, do you need any help? Is there anything I can do? David employed me um, between my undergraduate and my master's to do the project where I was interviewing undergraduates because they knew I was committed, they knew I was motivated and most of all I was determined to get somewhere in my life. Wasn't too sure where I was going and I don't think I ever really knew where I was going until probably I finished my PhD and went, oh, okay, I got here, that's brilliant. But I never really had a specific route. I never wanted to be someone in particular. I just felt I went through the process and found what I enjoyed and managed to make a career out of it. And I think for some people that can work really well. So I think I've talked enough. <laughs> Thank you very much.